Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Welcome to Axis Live number four. A lot of things looking different this time with different surroundings, different face. Well, let me explain everything that's going on to make sure we're all on the same page here. So first of all, this is terrible what happened to me this week, is we had some landscapers around our house uh, and they did an amazing job making our house look really nice uh, while we were all quarantined inside, but they cut through our internet cable. Can you imagine a worse time in the history of America to lose your internet connection than right now? It's a miracle. It's a miracle that I am keeping it together. No, we've got our phones, right? Well, at least we've got cellular data. But uh, I came to church to use a nice, stable internet connection for Access Live tonight. So I'm, uh, make sure that we don't cut out or have any problems or anything like that. So I'm coming to you uh, live from the little YouTube studio that we've set up at church. I'm the only one here. It's really sad. Normally on a Sunday night, we're all here together, right? We're all hanging out downstairs, having a great time. But it's just me this week. Um... So yeah, so that's number one reason for the different surroundings. Then let's talk about this face. Hopefully you guys have been watching Wednesday Night Live uh, on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. If you do, you know what happened. Uh, I was uh, kind of encouraged to try some different things with my beard this week uh, as part of our funny opening skit for Wednesday Night Live. And the beard got cut off. But no worries. As you can see, it's starting to come back in. We should have that bad boy back at least in the next couple of weeks, right? Hopefully, hopefully. Because I don't like how I look. It makes me look really weird. I get freaked out by how I look without this beard. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror. And then the first day I shaved off, at like, and so I had not shaved this thing in like eight years. I had had a goatee for eight years at least, or a bigger beard, right? So my lip and chin had not seen daylight in eight years. Well, this week when I took it off, it was like, it was like numb. It was like the skin right here, this part of my face had just gone numb because it had just been growing hair for eight years. It had forgot that you could do something other than grow hair. And it was weird. Anyway, you don't want to know about that. That's weird. We're here to have a good time tonight at Axis. Let's see who's uh, who's joining us tonight. We got we got Bron Bron. Jake LeBron is on. Yeah, we got our sixth graders hopefully with us tonight. Um um, and some of our current 5th graders, but going to be 6th graders, uh, coming up here soon. Uh, because starting this summer, we're going to have 6 all the way through 8th at Axis on Sunday nights. And so we've only got you 8th graders for a few more weeks until you move up to high school. Sometime in the coming weeks, we'll have a special send-off for you guys uh, and talk about what high school ministry is going to look like for you. But yeah, you could be on this live stream right now and you could be a 5th through 6th grader currently. But because you are going to be in middle school this fall, then you are welcome to join us for any of our middle school stuff. So you're welcome to be here on Sunday nights for Axis. Welcome to join us for anything in the midweek uh, time, anything like that. You guys are invited to come to it. But yeah, we got Jake LeBron. Uh, we've got Sarah Brandstad. Awesome. I know Abby Ahrens is on here. Um, who else do we have? Yeah, go watch last Wednesday Night Live. Abby was saying to see what happened to Andrew's facial hair. It was, it was stupid. It was stupid. And we played a really, really fun game that we'll have to play sometime on Axis Live, the Whisper Challenge. We will. Um, yeah, but if you're just joining us, feel free to jump in the live chat and, and type away the whole time. If you get questions during any time, during teaching or anything, shoot them in there. Funny comments, put them in. All of it is welcome in the live chat. But here's how we've been starting Access Live for the last few weeks, if you haven't been with us, is I've been showing you my favorite memes quarantine memes from the week. So this week is going to be no different. I've got my favorite quarantine memes from this week that I'm going to share with you guys, uh, starting with my four moods during quarantine. So we got my four moods during quarantine as portrayed by Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. I think he's Stitch. I'll be honest with you. I've never watched Lilo and Stitch. It's never been my jam. I don't know. Yeah, I know a lot of people love it. I just didn't get it. But uh, here we go. Yeah, the full moods during quarantine. What else we got? Okay, I like this one. Maybe if everyone stands their brooms up again, it'll close the portal and reverse all of this. So maybe maybe everything went crazy. You, you'll remember like a couple of months ago when everybody was standing their brooms on end and they were saying it's because of gravity or something and NASA had said it. Turns out it had nothing to do with gravity. It's just that those kinds of brooms will stand up. You can try it again right now. But maybe... 
maybe that's what sent everything crazy. Maybe we all need to stand our brooms up again and this quarantine can end and coronavirus will end and the portal will close. Um, don't leave your house unless it's for the... Anybody know it? You should know it. If you don't know it, then I'm shocked that you don't know this song. You need to go back and rewatch your Disney movies. Bear necessities. Bear necessities, right? Don't leave your house unless you're going for the bear necessities. Okay. Remember going to places? That was awesome. I like this meme. It made me a little sad because I was thinking about all the places that I don't go. We've actually, it's not been too bad, but hopefully you guys have been going out for walks and stuff or go for a bike ride, right? Because you can still do those things just as long as you're not going everywhere, interacting with people. So we have been trying to find ways that we can go for walks or go fly a kite or something like that, but we're not getting to go to the movie theaters. I miss going to the movie theaters. I used to love going to the movie theaters. And did you know they've canceled all of this? Oh, they haven't canceled, but they've bumped all of this year's Marvel movies back. So now I can't watch Black Widow until like the fall. We should all be sad about that. Okay, next one. You've got to be kidding. So here we have a guy who has... Uh, cut a hole in a giant water bottle and that's the mask he's using to to make sure he's staying clean now I've got one of the I got a face mask a friend of mine made one for me and Janae um, when we go grocery shopping but this is like next level this is this is next level uh, this has really got nothing to do with quarantine but I saw it this week and it made me laugh someone got uh, an ultrasound they're pregnant and she sent it and it, the baby looks like the emperor from Star Wars is that not unbelievably awesome that baby the force is strong with that baby the force is super strong with that baby okay the first word you see is where you are going in April what's the first word that you see what is the first word that you see nowhere nowhere that is the only word that's really in there. That's because we're all in quarantine. Okay, so this is by one of my favorite actors and comedians called Hank Azaria. And he said, we're at the point where every line of the take me out to the ball game is illegal. You can't take anyone to a ball game. You should not go out with the crowd. And for the love of our Lord Jesus, you don't ask strangers to buy you peanuts and Cracker Jacks. You don't know where their hands have been. So, baseball fans, take me out to the ball game is no longer legal. It's totally bad. We shouldn't be doing any of the things it suggests. Uh, so, <laughs> student passes are excited about April's Fool being a Wednesday night, right? A few weeks ago, we had April's Fools on Wednesday night. You should have seen uh, we all the uh, pranks that Gretchen was planning that week on Wednesday Night Live. And then COVID-19 crept up on us all, and we all got locked up, and none of us could play the pranks. And that's actually what happened to Gretchen. She couldn't figure out how to prank any of us. And then we got Kevin the Frog here saying, I know you all think I'm okay, but deep down, I just want to go eat in a Mexican restaurant again. Anybody else missing eating out at their favorite restaurants right now? I'm missing eating out at a lot of different places. But thankfully, we have a lot of businesses and restaurants in town that are doing pickup the order out so make sure you're doing that to support local businesses because it's a really way to help people and love people in this time it sounds crazy but it really is if you go by it helps people's business stay running while everything's closed down so me and Janae like to order food from Sergio's Cantina in Geneva great place so good so we were getting our Mexican face that way and then we had some bag of local the other day if you've not had a, a bag of local I, I think it might be the best beggar in the Tri-Cities area. Maybe. Five Guys is pretty good, even though it's fast food. And then uh, Urban Counter also has some pretty good beggars. So this is me at night during quarantine, putting my phone on charge. Get some rest, phone. You have a big day tomorrow. Don't tell me that you, you guys who have got iPhones or smartphones, you know, you know that thing that tells you how much you've been on your phone that week and makes you feel really guilty? Like you, where's my phone? Like you pull it out and it says, you, it's got a little notification that's like, you have used your phone 74% more than last week, right? That's how I've been a lot. I've been using this phone, right? And now that the internet's gone at the house, it's like this is the only way, whoop, over this way, the only way I can get internet. Look at all these notifications. Any of you guys sending messages saying hi? Okay. Um, 
And our last one, I believe, if you need 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 14-day quarantine, you probably should have been seeing a doctor long before COVID-19. That's true. We've talked about the toilet paper before. Oh, no, there's one more. Hey, guys, how's it hanging? Spider-Man living the dream during quarantine because he's the only superhero that has a mask that covers his nose and mouth. All the rest of those guys got to go buy their own masks. So I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, there's another one. Man, I was really wrong. There's plenty more. I'll bring my own air, uh, thanks. So remember that guy we saw at the grocery store who had the huge water bottle on his head? This guy takes it one level above that. He puts on his scuba gear and brings his own oxygen to breathe. So this guy's super safe. So he's walking around in Walmart or in Target with his scuba gear so that he can breathe his own air, right? Crazy times, crazy times. <laughs> Quarantine day 11. Playing Uno with the chickens. Playing Uno with the chickens. That's how crazy things are some getting right now. Some of you guys are playing uh, games with your dogs, trying to teach your dogs how to play Monopoly or something. I know. Okay, four moods. Now we go. Now we're definitely done. We're definitely done now. Okay, so those were the best memes of this last week. Um, and we will make sure we keep doing those. I've got some uh, that I'm already collecting for next week, but hopefully those tickled you and were entertaining to you. I like those a lot. Uh, but I've got a game for us tonight to play. It. Hopefully it's going to work out. It's a Kahoot again. So I know you guys love Kahoots. Uh, last time we did Kahoots, because the stream has got like a 10 second delay, it caused a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to work hard to fix that this week. And if it goes wrong, we can all blame it on me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the question before I hit next for the slide. So, Because what's going to happen is the Kahoot is going to be slightly ahead of the live stream. So I'm going to give you the question. I'm going to read it out on the live stream and then click. So hopefully it should sync up a little bit. Don't worry about it. If it looks bad, it's on me. Okay. Uh, but let me uh, bring up the Kahoot for us real quick. Where'd you go, Kahoot? Where'd you go? Oh, he's the Kahoot. Shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down. Don't you like my cool streaming software that I've got? It's really fun. Okay. And then we just got to go start classic. Okay, so what you guys are going to do, you guys are going to go to Kahoot.it on your phones or smart devices or computers, whatever it is, and you're going to type in this pin at the top of the screen, okay? So uh, while you guys are logging on and getting ready, um, I will explain what this is going to be all about, okay? So uh, how many of you guys have been watching... Um, let me close this for a second. This guy every week. SGN, some good news. So this is John Krasinski. He's an actor. Um, he's currently the lead uh, potential character to play Mr. Fantastic in a Marvel movie. But you don't care about that. Um, but he has been each week creating a little 15-minute YouTube show called SGN, Some Good News, where he tells us really positive, uplifting things. Because it's a, it can be a challenging time. We're all stuck at home uh, looking for some really fun things happening. Uh, and so uh, he has been trying to brighten our day or brighten our week each week by bringing us the, the best positive news from across the country um, for the last three weeks. You can go watch these. These are great. They're really fun. Talks about uh, different people. He kind of interviews different celebrities. It's really fun. Um, but really just positive stories from all across the country. Sorry, I'm shaking the laptop here a little bit. Um, but uh, my favorite one so far has been his second one that he's done um, because he did one and they had this as a part of it. Hopefully you guys know what this is, right? Some of you guys might not be. Some of you guys might be a little bit too young to have seen it yet. But you've probably at least heard of Hamilton. Okay, Hamilton is a musical, uh, and it, it's grown on me. My favorite musical used to be Les Miserables, which uh, I don't know if you guys know about that one either, but uh, Les Mis. But Hamilton is pretty good. Uh, it's up there. My other favorite is Lion King. Hopefully some of you guys have seen Lion King live. But if you've never been to see a show, Hamilton might be one you want to go see sometime. It's all about uh, Hamilton. Hold on to that information. might be useful to you in a second. Uh, and 
uh, kind of an American history, and it's got rap songs and, and R&B songs. It's really, really cool. So uh, in this show, in uh, John Krasinski's show, he had the whole cast of the musical sing. Anyway, it got me in a, in a Hamilton mood, and I was listening to some of the songs this week. Uh, and definitely, you're going to want to check, if you want to think about some of those songs, you're going to check with parents before you download them, because some of them uh, have some questionable language. But really fun music, really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it got me thinking all about Hamilton. So what we've got this week is a quiz, a kahoot, all about American history, because you all are Americans, so you know everything there is to know about American history, and a little bit about Hamilton, for those of you who've seen it. I know that some of you guys have seen it. If Grace Elfman's on here, I know she's seen it, because she's told me that she really likes Hamilton. She's seen it a couple of times. Um, let me jump over and see, actually, who's who, who we got. Because I always have to jump in on the YouTube page to see who, who we've got. Um, yeah, we've got Ben Fugman's in here, Melissa Schulenberg. Yeah, we got a bunch of you guys. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about American history, and we're going to talk a little bit about Hamilton. So, again, here's how it's going to work. Is I'm going to read you the question, and then I'm going to click next on the Kahoot. So, hopefully, by the time you're hearing me ask the question on uh, the live stream, you are ready to answer it and you'll know what's popping up on your phone, okay? So, here we go, here we go, here we go. If this doesn't work out, the Kahoot thing is dead, I promise, for future weeks. But I really like Kahoots and you guys really like Kahoots, so let's definitely try and do one because it's fun when we do them, okay? So, let's see what we got. We got a bunch of different people. We got 19, 20 players, right? We got all kinds of different names. Elated Pelican, Epic Hair. Space Goose? Super Seal? I think this thing is telling you what you're allowed to be called again. Ah, I can't stand when it does that. I like your funny names because you always make names that make fun of me. Okay, but uh, let me get my questions ready. Here we go. And he's, by the way, by the way, if you don't pass this with at least 70%, we got to at least talk about whether you're really American or not. Because this is like the Revolutionary War questions right now. We're about to give you the questions about the founding of America. So you guys need to know this stuff. It's important stuff, right? Some of them are the kind of weird facts about it. But, okay, but here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start this thing. We're going to start this thing. But before I click start, I'm going to give you the first question. I'm going to give you the first question so you're ready. The first question is... Who is the star of Hamilton? It's a really easy one. I made it really easy so that you can get it. Most of these are going to be true or false, but the first two are multiple choice. Uh, and the question is, the first question is, who is the star of Hamilton? And then once we've answered that, I'll give you the next question and we'll move through. Okay, so uh, who's the star of Hamilton? Are you ready to begin? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. We're starting this thing. 21 players. Access live. Who's the star of Hamilton? Is it... Red Alexander Hamilton, blue Aaron Bear, yellow George Washington, or green Eliza Hamilton? Who is the star? Let's put the music on. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Everybody loves those. Okay, we got everybody's coming in now. We got a little bit of time left. Oh, the delay is killing us. The delay is killing us. We only got 13 answers, but everybody got right. Cause you smart. You smart. S M R T. You're smart. Okay. Space Goose is currently in the lead by eight points. Now I'm going to give you the next question, and I'm going to give you the multiple choices as well, okay? Who shot Aaron Burr? I've messed it up. Guys, I've completely messed up this question. <laughs> so now you've got a free answer, okay? The correct question was who shot Hamilton, and I am dumb. And so I give you the answer. So there's a freebie right now for everyone. There's a freebie. This is why I shouldn't live stream anything. I'm great in person. I'm a people person. But when you tell me I got to live stream stuff, I mess things up, man. Like my face when I shave my beard off. I messed it up. Okay. But who shot Alexander Hamilton? 
Maybe you forgot what I said. Hopefully you have. Who shot Alexander Hamilton? Who shot Alexander Hamilton? Or who dueled and killed Alexander Hamilton? Was it Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Aaron Burr, sir, or Eliza Hamilton? So red is Thomas Jefferson, blue is George Washington, yellow is Aaron Burr, sir, and uh, green is Eliza Hamilton. Everybody should get this right. Everybody should get this right. Okay, the answers are coming in. Time's ticking down. Time's ticking down. Hopefully, though, my little plan here is whacked out. And we're getting close to being synced up. Okay. Oh, who put George Washington and Thomas Jefferson? First of all, George Washington, don't be killing no one. He is the first president of the United States. He's a good man. He's a good man. Okay. But it was Aaron Burr, sir, has how he's referred to in the musical all the time. Um, yeah, and that was a freebie for me because I was dumb and I gave it away when I said who shot Aaron Burr. Okay, but here's how it's going to go. Uh, Space Goose, still in the lead. It's narrow, though. Rapid Sloth right behind. Rapid Sloth, let's see. Uh, who else? Who, who, is, who is Space Goose? Who is Space Goose? Someone put it in the live chat. Who's Space Goose? Guess who's a Hamilton Ned? Sarah, you're a Hamilton Ned? Ooh, you should be. He's a really interesting character. He's a really interesting character. I should get from, out from behind the kahoot, right? Uh, Space Goose, tell me who you are. Oh, no, the phone, phone is glitchy. Melissa, no. Okay. Um, okay, the next question. The next question is a true or false. They're all true or false from now on, so it should work out much smoother. True or false. I'm going to go fast too because at the pace I'm currently giving you this quiz, we will be here the entire night. And I know I'm not that interesting. You're like, I want to watch some Netflix. Why am I watching Youth Group right now? Why am I watching Access? Okay, so the next question, true or false? The first one will be true. The next color will be false. I think it's red and blue. Red is true. Blue is false. Okay, and the question is, at the time of the Revolutionary War, at the time of Alexander Hamilton, Americans were generally taller than British people by at least three inches. Okay, that's the question. So true or false, Americans at the time of the war were at least three inches generally taller than British people. Here we go. True or false, here it is. It's live. It's live right now. It's popping up on your phones. It's popping up on your phones. Oh, I was wrong. Blue is true and red is false. Blue is true and red is false. But Americans were generally much taller than the English. Mm, let's find out. Americans were generally much taller than the English. I'm a tall guy. Where do I come from? Ooh, it was split. It was split. But the five of you said true. Got it right. You got it right. Okay, Space Goose. You've been knocked down by Social Bex. Social Bex has a streak with three correct answers in a row. Okay. Uh, next question is going to be, I like this one. At the time of the Revolutionary War, British soldiers would have part-time jobs as actors in musicals on Broadway. During the war. So during the war, while the war was going on, they had weekend jobs where they would go to Broadway in New York and they would star in musicals. Is that true or is that false? They would go to Broadway and they would act and they would sing and they would dance and they would do all the other stuff that's in musicals, right? True or false? British soldiers. British soldiers had part-time jobs doing that in New York. Okay, here it comes. It's going to launch on your phones right now. By the time you're hearing these words, though, you're like, I already answered it. Okay, so British soldiers starred in musicals in New York during the war. True or false, British soldiers starred in musicals during the war. True is blue. Red is false. Easy to remember. Red means bad, means false, means wrong. Okay? But British soldiers starred in musicals in New York during the war. Did it happen? British. British. Keyword British soldiers started in musicals. Split again! But the correct answer was true. True. Y'all are like, this stream is so far behind. Okay, here we go. Let's see who's in the lead. Social Bex has been knocked down to second place by Amusing Orcs. 
who? Why does this thing come up with these names? I don't even know what an amusing ox is. Is an ox like an animal? I don't know. Okay. I think it must be an animal because all the rest are animals, right? Except Social Bex, who was able to put your fake name in there. Okay. I'm guessing that that... Is that Rebecca Schulenberg? Is that Social Bex? We'll see. Okay. Oh, quick. I forgot to give you the question before I did it. George Washington had wooden teeth. George Washington had wooden teeth. True or false? George Washington had wooden teeth. True or false? True or false? Blue is true. Red is false. Blue is true. Red is false. George Washington had wooden teeth in his mouth, in his gums, in his pie hole. They were wooden. Oh, there's only one answer. It's my fault. Quick. Oh, we only got six. That was my fault. It's false. Let me tell you why, my fellow Americans. Because it is a myth that he had wooden teeth. He actually, the truth is way weirder. Way weirder. Because uh, for one, I've always went like, who wants wood in their mouth? Ah, stress, it's just the thought of it stresses me out. But this is what he actually had. And this is way weirder. He had fake teeth made from ivory. Okay, expensive, but I get it. They're kind of like it. But then listen to this. Listen to this, people. The rest of his teeth were cow's teeth. Like, he removed the teeth of a cow. A cow put them in a th thing that goes in his mouth. It was like springs. And then he put cow teeth in his mouth? And he ate his food with cow teeth? The dude had cow's teeth in his mouth. Have you ever seen a cow's teeth? They're way too big to be in a human mouth. Th George Washington probably had a weird-looking face. Cow's teeth in his mouth. I read that up on the internet. Must be true. Okay. Who's in the lead? Amusing Ox. But Super Seal is up five places. The highest climber. Okay. So I am going to read the question this time. The next question is the English hired pirates to help fight the Americans. The English hired pirates like Jack Sparrow to fight the Americans. The English hired pirates to fight the Americans. True or false? Here we go. Here we go. True or false? The English hired pirates to plunder the Americans. True or false? True or false? Blue is true. Red is false. The English hired pirates, like legit pirates with eye patches and wooden legs and pirates and rum. Mm -hmm. Only three people got it right. He's what actually happened. The Americans hired pirates to plunder the British. That's right. The Americans, they think, man, the British were too uptight. They were too, like, posh. And, oh, we will never do business with pirates. But Americans were like, yeah, let's get the pirates. Let's get the pirates. Okay, so that's right. You got three people got it right. Amusing Ox is still doing good. But Atlanted Pelican is coming up right behind. Coming up right behind. Okay. Here we go. Next question. We're going to go find. Uh, there was a soldier in the American army who pulled a Mulan. He pulled a Mulan. Let me explain what that means. Pulling a Mulan is where you're a girl, but you dress as a guy so that you can get into the army. Because in those days, they didn't let women in the army. And did it for a whole year before she was caught. Okay. And her name was Deborah. I won't give you a last name because then that might help you out. But there was a lady named Deborah, and she made it in for a whole year. True or false? True or false, someone pulled a Mulan in the original American army. True or false, there was a soldier in the American army who pulled a Mulan, dressed as a man, and fought in battles for over a year, and... Is it true? Is it false? Who knows? True or false? Here's a question, ladies out there. Would you pull a Mulan? You don't need to, right? You don't need to because you can get in the army because we got some equal rights now. But back then, it was not that way. And so you watch movies. Yeah, true. I told the story like it was clearly true. Yeah, That's right. And she was called Deborah, uh, and she did it for over a year, and she destroyed it. She wrecked it, and then they found out, and they were like, you're a baller. So she didn't even get into trouble for it because she was a baller. Okay, next question. Uh, Musing Ox, still on top, still on top, Lady Pelican right behind. But the next question is, the only musical that is more successful than Hamilton 
is The Lion King. The only musical more successful than Hamilton is The Lion King. The stage show of the Disney movie The Lion King. The only musical more successful than Hamilton is The Lion King. True or false? True or false? Blue is true, red is false. Seven. I'm seeing those answers come in. Ooh. That delay is probably freaking you out because if we're still delayed, I'm trying to imagine. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Twelve people false. That's right. Hamilton is the most successful musical in the history of musicals. Hamilton is the most successful musical in the history of musicals. Sarah Branson, I know you were a big fan of Hamilton, so I want, I'm curious to see how you're doing. Are you doing good? Are you keeping it up? Yeah. Okay, so awesome. You guys know some uh, details about it. Oh, okay. Oh, mine went before you said the question, and then I ran out of time. I know. Stinking delay. Stinking delay. Okay, next question. Next question is, Uncle Sam is a real person. Uncle Sam is a real person. Is Uncle Sam a real person? Is Uncle Sam a real person? The guy that you see in all those posters and, and everybody says Uncle Sam and he's like got a huge American hat and he's kind of like Abe Lincoln. If Abe Lincoln was shredded and ripped, Uncle Sam, he was a real guy. He was a real person. Was he? Was he? I don't know. Have you even noticed, if you, you, well, you may have not noticed this, but if you guys are doing like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or any of those things, right, do you realize how weird you become when you get in front of a camera and there's like, like there's no one else in this room right now. I'm just talking into a camera and I'm getting weird. I'm doing weird things, okay? But the question is, is Uncle Sam a real person? True or false? True or false? Is Uncle Sam a real person? Blue is true, red is false. Uncle Sam was a real person. Oh, yeah. The stream was on time with this one. Because we got like a bazillion answers in like 10 seconds. 13 answers. Uncle Sam was a real person. True or false? True or false? Uncle Sam was a real person. True or false? Oh, y'all said false. No, it was true. He was a real person. He was a meat packer, right? He used to give meat to the soldiers. And he was in the army too. He was a real soldier. But people loved his meat so much that when they had the barrels that said U.S. on them for United States of, of meat. They said it was from Uncle Sam, right? So he became super famous because everybody loved him. They thought he was super awesome. And he was a real soldier, so he really is a baller. Okay, Musinox, still on top by now like 2,000 points. You got an answer streak of three. Okay, who, someone in the live chat, tell me, who is amusing Ox? You gotta tell me who is the amusing ox. Okay. Next question. We just got a couple more left. The of the original signers of the Declaration of the Independence, eight of them were British. Eight of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence were British, and they were from Britain. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I don't have a beard anymore to do that with. What? Okay, but eight of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence were British. Let's go. Let's do this. Eight of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence were British guys because they had really nice handwriting and they were very eloquent. Is it true or is it false? Is it true or is it false? Prove you're American. Prove it to me. True or false? True or false? I may have made this a little too long, but that's okay because I like finding out on live stream that I'm dumb. It's great. It feels good. Okay. Uh... Ooh, split, even, seven and seven, true, true, it was true, it was true, there was eight signers of the British, uh, of the Declaration of Independence, who were British, okay, next question, if Hamilton, this one's for Sarah, if Hamilton was sang at the normal pace of most musicals, right, because it's upbeat, because it's rap music, if it was sang at the normal pace, it would take four to six hours to watch the whole show because they're packing so many words a minute. True or false? True or false? If Hamilton was sung at the pace of other Broadway shows, it would take four to six hours to perform. Blue is true, red is false. If it was sung, right? So like if we slowed it down, slowed all the music down, 
it would take four to six hours. Mm. Mm. I don't like doing this without a beard. It feels weird. Okay, correct answer is true. That's right. As some of these are a setup. They obviously are true. Okay, I'm using Ox still on top. Next question. The English were much healthier than the Americans in the Revolutionary War. Now think this one through. Think about what American people eat today. Pizza. Well, think about this. I moved to America and I gained weight. Right, so you tell me. Who is healthier? The British at the time of the Amer at the time of the Revolutionary War, was it the British or was it the Americans? So true or false, the English were healthier than Americans at the time of the Revolutionary War. At the time of the Revolutionary War, English were healthier than Americans. True or false? The English were much healthier than Americans. Mm -hmm. Nine answers in. Kahoot, Kahoot, let's listen to some of that Kahoot music. Should sing a Hamilton song. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, who wants? Who wants? Okay, five of you said false. That's the correct answer. Back in the day, believe it or not, Americans were way healthier. Apparently the food in the colonies was much healthier for you because they grew it naturally. And English people were eating garbage. Literally, garbage. From garbage cans. So, the Americans were much healthier. Okay. Uh, just three questions left. Um, using Ox is still on top, but Elated Pelican be chasing you. Elated Pelican be chasing you. Okay, so the, the question is, the first Independence Day was on July 2nd. True or false? The first ever Independence Day was on July 2nd. True or false? The first Independence Day was on July 2nd. True or false? True or false? Is it false or is it true? Is it correct or is it wrong? Is it... I've got nothing else. True or false? That's all I've got. True or false? True or false? True or false? Eight people said true, and you were correct. You were correct. An amusing ox is going on a lead, and Pelican has taken the lead. If you were a lead, Pelican, put it in the live chat on YouTube. Okay, two, two questions left. Two questions left. Uh, some songs in Hamilton took over a year to write. So some songs in Hamilton took over a year to write. True or false? Took over a year to write the songs. True or false? So he was writing Hamilton for years. Okay, true or false? True or false? Some of the songs in Hamilton took over a year to write. True or false? Here we go. Sarah Brandstad is like, boom, 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 boom. Sarah got it because she loves Hamilton. Andrew should rap to the Kahoot music. Rap some Hamilton. Okay. I'm not throwing away my shot. Okay. 13 true. That's right. That's right. It took over a year to write some of the songs in there because they were so good, so complex. Okay. Lady Pelican, you're on fire. Answer streak of five. You were up there. Lady Pelican, put it in the live chat. Who are you? Who are you, Lady Pelican? We need to know. Amusing Ox right behind. Let's see. We got one question left. We got one question left, and the question is: There were two Boston Tea Parties. There were two Boston Tea Parties. Y'all are all like, "Why are we getting a history lesson right now?" I came here to learn about Jesus. You did. That's right. But I wanted to make sure we waste forty minutes talking about America because it's the greatest country on the planet. Okay. Uh, to the two Boston Tea Parties, true or false? There was two Boston Tea Parties. Okay. Do you notice how I said it's the greatest country on earth? I learned that because now that I'm an American, I have to say that all the time. I've got to tell everyone. And the other thing I've got to say is we're the leader of the free world. That's like something you have to say if you're an American. Okay. Mm. Okay. Eight people said false. Two people said true. Or five people said true. And you were correct, people. There was two Boston Tea Parties. They did one Boston Tea Party, and then the next day they were like, that was really fun. We should throw more of that tea in the, in the river. So they did it again. Okay, but the winner is, 
Here it is. In third place. Amusing Ox dropped to third place. Number two. Rapid Sloth. And number one. Elated Pelican. Yeah! Elated Pelican. All right, all right, all right. Social Beck's in fifth place. I didn't see who was in fourth place, though. Okay, okay. That was awesome. That was awesome. Okay, it probably took slightly too long. <laughs> slightly too long. So uh, thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being awesome and hanging out with me. This is mainly just to keep me from going crazy because I miss you guys. Uh, so let me. here's what we're going to do for the rest of our time. We, I'm going to um, give you guys a few announcements of things that are going to be coming up this week that you guys can get involved in. And then we're going to talk about the book of Acts for a little bit, just a few minutes, I promise. Uh, we hopefully won't go too much past 8 o'clock. Um, but really, can I say, first of all, I really love these nights. Thank you guys, all of you guys who come and join in and do these on Sunday nights. I know it's not our usual kind of way we do these things. Um, it's awkward. We got to jump online, but I love being with you guys. I love reading the live chat and I love seeing like Rebecca Schulenberg and Abby Ahrens and Daniel Lotspeak, who I'm assuming is Cameron Lotspeak. Um, and I, I love seeing all you guys, Isaac Witt. I love seeing all y'all, uh, because I miss you guys. I miss you guys a whole ton. And so thank you for jumping on and doing this. Rapid Sloth was Paige Jennings. Yes. Paige Jennings. You're so clutch. You're so clutch, Pitch Jennings. Okay. Um, and Rebecca Schulenberg. I, I don't even know if you were social backs. I'm assuming you were, but we don't really know that. Anyway, where were we? I was saying thank you guys for jumping on here. I know it's not a, like uh, a standard way of doing stuff, but it really means a lot to me. So if for no one else, it's a, a lot for me. I hope it's blessing you guys. I hope you guys are getting a good time to be encouraged and have fun and do something a little goofy. Um, but yeah, I love hanging out with you guys, but uh, a couple of things I wanted to let you not know is coming up. Uh, first of all, during the week, um, I want to give props to, uh, a couple of guys. I want to give props to Casey Bean. I want to give props to Nate Garlock, uh, to who else do we have in, in there? Brady Van Rossum. How could I forget you? But most of all, to Jake LeBron, okay? These four guys have started a Bible study with me during the week. They asked me to, to do something with them, and so we've started something. So you'll notice on our YouTube channel, there are videos called the Gospel of John Bible Study. So what we've been doing is on Mondays and on Thursdays at 3 p.m., Mondays and Thursdays at 3 p.m., we've been getting on YouTube Live just like this, and we've been reading through a chapter of the Gospel of John and talking about it. We can talk about it in the live chat and then just this last week we've even started on messenger for kids doing some follow-up and, and kind of chatting on there and touching base so uh while we're trying to kind of navigate this whole stay at home thing uh i want to try and come up with as many ways for us to connect as possible and i've loved doing this and I, again i want to give a shout out to those four guys because they set it up it was their idea um, and they just let me be a part of it. Uh, but if you guys want to join in and be a part of it uh, with me, Jake, Nate, Casey, and Brady, then you can join us on Mondays at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and then on Thursdays at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So there's going to be one tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to say as, as well that um, there was an email that went out and it said that it was Wednesdays at 3 p.m. That's wrong. I'm going to send a new email so that that gets fixed. It's Mondays 3 p.m. and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Uh, and we kind of just talk about the Gospel of John for usually no more than about 30 minutes. Uh, and then we might jump on and do some questions, different things like that. But it's been really fun. And if you guys want to jump in with us, I love hearing from you guys. I uh, love getting messages. I've especially been loving... Watching you guys on our Bible app, just comment on there. I know Abby's commented a lot. Uh, Quentin, you've commented a lot. I love seeing your comments, Quentin. Um, Trenchy and Santi has been setting up his own, and a couple of guys have been jumping in on that. Uh, I saw Grace and Galen. He commented this week on our Bible study on the app. So I, I love all this stuff, seeing from you guys. And it's a really good way that we can stay in community and we can stay faithful to, to getting into God's Word together and helping one another because I love hearing what God is teaching you guys uh, through your readings and the, and the questions you bring and the ideas you bring. So yeah, if you want to do that, the Gospel of John Bible Studies on Mondays at 3 and Thursdays at 3. Um, something else that we have on our YouTube channel, you might have seen, is Bite Size Bible. Um, there haven't been a, a couple 
we there haven't been any the last couple of weeks uh, because uh, one was Easter week uh, and then this week my internet got cut. But uh, these are uh, just kind of quick videos that give you summaries of books of the Bible. So usually I try to shoot for like 10, 15 minutes. Um, some are shorter than others. But there's two up right now of Jonah and then of Philemon in the New Testament. And seeing as though we've just started as a church doing Corinthians, this week I'm going to put out a bite-sized Bible on the letter of First Corinthians. I'm going to put one out on the Old Testament book of Amos, and then we're going to put a bonus third one up of Acts as well, because we've just started reading Acts together in our Bible app. So get on, check out those Bible studies as well. I would love for you to jump in again, just a reminder of the app, on the app, on the Bible study app. Uh, we'd love to talk there with you guys about uh, the book of Acts. That's what we're reading. We've just finished the Gospel of John, uh, and now we're reading the book of Acts. If you download the uh, Bible app, um, the Uversion Bible app, and then you can either search for me and add me as a friend, and I'll add you to Project 345, or you can search for the reading plan, Project 345, um, and uh, we read that during the week. But here's what I want to do for our last 13 minutes. Our last 13 minutes, which we all know is going to turn into 15 because I can't stop talking. Um, but the last 13 minutes of our time together, I wanted to kind of do two things. I want to talk about Pastor Jeff's sermon from this morning, which I thought was awesome. If you didn't get to see it, I want you to go back and watch it because it was so good. Um, and there was the first one in the letter of First Corinthians, and we're reading the chapter on love, chapter 13. And then I'm going to connect that to what we're talking about uh, or what we're reading about in the book of Acts, okay? So we start Acts. We've read three chapters of Acts so far. Today was the fourth chapter. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about what Jeff said and a little bit about Acts. So, um, first of all, again, if you haven't seen Jeff's message from this morning, go to our website or go to Chapel Street's Facebook page or you can go to Chapel Street Church's YouTube page and watch the service from this morning. Um, I hope you guys have been jumping in and worshiping with your families on there. It's been really awesome uh, way to stay connected. Again, it's my favorite thing on Sunday mornings to see all the families jumping on and everybody I miss. Um, but he preached a message this morning on 1 Corinthians 13. And you have probably had 1 Corinthians 13 lots of different times before. It's the chapter that says love is patient, love is kind. And it tells us all about what love is. And Pastor Jeff he kind of started by saying, he, here's what this is about, right? It's not, it's not about kind of this sentimentality. It's not about us all just having warm, fuzzy feelings. It's about how God has loved us. It's telling us what love really is like from the Bible's perspective, what it should look like. And he said three things that I want to uh, bring up, and we're going to link to Acts tonight. Three things. He said, first of all, and I want you guys to hold on to these after I send them. If you've got a pen and paper, you might want to even write them down because they were really great. The first one is he said that love is not a feeling. It's something that we do. He said love is not a feeling. It's something that we do. And that's something we're going to find out in Acts. The second thing is he said that you can speak about Jesus and not be filled with the love of God. Okay, so you can talk about Jesus, you can know a whole bunch about Jesus, but not be filled with the love of God, right? And that's what we want as Christians is we don't just want to talk the talk, we want to walk the walk. We want to be filled with the love of God. We want to know what real love is. So that was the second thing he says and what we're going to see in Acts. Uh, and then lastly, he said God loves us. And that's what First Corinthians chapter 13 should remind us of the most is that God loves us. He loves us so much that he gave us his son Jesus that we just celebrated on Easter Gave up his life for me and you. It's amazing that he did this. And we don't we don't think about it a lot. Like we say the phrase, God loves us a lot. Uh, and especially like when we're going through a time as we are all going through now where we can get discouraged and we can get anxious and afraid and we can be nervous. We, we hear a lot of people saying, well, God loves you, right? But I, I often find myself asking the question, yeah, but what does that mean? What does it mean that God's loves, God loves me, right? So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight from an example from Acts 3, okay? And we're going to, here we go. We've got the Andrew Griffiths Bible Teaching Challenge. We've got 10 minutes. So if you guys want to go to Acts 3 with me, Acts 3 in your Bibles, uh, or you can write this down. You can go look at it later. Acts 3. This is a story of what's happening right at the beginning of the church. So 
Easter has happened, right? Jesus has died. He's rose again. He's back for like 40 days. He hangs out with his disciples and crowds of people. And he tells them about God's love. And then he ascends into heaven. And what's left is the disciples are left uh, on earth to preach the good news. Jesus' last command to them is to preach the good news in all the nations, okay? To go out and tell everybody about what Jesus has done. So um, what we find out in Acts is that they kind of hang around Jerusalem for a little bit, and then the Holy Spirit comes and fills them up and gets them ready. And Peter like becomes a changed man. Because if you remember, Peter was the guy who at Easter betrayed Jesus, right? We always think of Judas as the betrayer, and Judas was the most famous betrayer. But Peter also betrayed Jesus at Easter because he denied him three times. But he hangs around, and Jesus forgives him and shows mercy to him, loves him, and heals him. And now we see in Acts that Peter's life takes a 180. Now he's no longer afraid, right, to talk about Jesus. Like now he's telling everyone about Jesus. And he preaches this whole sermon in, in Acts 2 and these amazing things happen. Well, then we get to Acts 3 and it's kind of like this is like normal life now, right? It's like what is normal life going to look like for these guys knowing that Jesus lived and he died and he rose again and he said what he said. What's normal life going to look like for them? And so we find out, now Peter and John, this is verse 1 of chapter 3, Peter and John were going up to the temple for the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. So here's what normal life looked like for these guys. After getting to know Jesus, just go spend some time praying together, right? Actually, that's what they did a lot. They gathered in each other's houses. We're told in Acts 2, right before this, that they would gather together regularly to eat meals together, to pray together, to worship together. And he's, he's Peter and John just doing what they always do, just like what me and you do, is we, we gather together to pray together, we go to church, right? They're just living their normal life. They want to pray. But I don't want to over-normalize it. I don't want to say that so much that we think like, okay, it's just what they did. Because here's the truth is, it shows us that they're really dedicated to this Jesus thing, right? They're really dedicated to this Jesus thing because they're going to pray. They want to go spend time at the temple praying. They're making room for their life. So the first question I've got for you is, are you, are you making room for Jesus in your life? Okay. Are you making room for Jesus in your life? Are you making room for him to be your axis? Some of you guys who are in fifth and sixth grade, you've never heard us talk about this, but the reason we call Sunday nights axis is because we talk about what our life revolves around, right? Like the earth is on its axis and it rotates around its axis. That's the point on which it spins around, right? And so we talk about what's the axis of our lives. What's the thing that everything in our lives revolves around? It should be Jesus. And so a question like, do we make time to pray to God, to actually have a conversation with him? That's kind of a core question, right? To being a Christian. Um, so they're going in there doing this. And then on the way in, uh, the, there's a man there who was lame from birth, which means he couldn't walk, right? He had a disability. And uh, he was begging for money, right? Because he was in poverty, uh, probably because of his disability. And here's what happens. is Peter, along with John, looked straight at him. This is verse 4 in chapter 3. And he said, look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And the guy's healed. The guy stands up. Then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. So I want to pause there, and I want to go back to the first thing Pastor Jeff says, okay? We've got six minutes left now. The first thing that Pastor Jeff said in this sermon that stuck with me, and I want to share with those and want to think about together tonight, is that love is not a feeling, it's something that we do, okay? Love is not a feeling that we have, it's something that we do right? There's, there's lots of ways that we feel love, right? Like we feel romantic love. We feel familiar love, right? Like we love our families and our friends. Uh, we love our pets, right? We love um, certain types of food sometimes is how we talk about love, right? So that's a lot of different types of love that I just mentioned, and they're all really different. Like hopefully you don't love your family the same way that you love five guys beggar and fries, right? Hopefully not. That would be weird, like, if you were, like, ready to die for a Five Guys bagger in the same way that you're ready to die for your brother or your sister, right? But, so there's lots of different types of love, right? And here's what Pastor Jeff said to try and narrow that down. And what he was saying that the letter of First Corinthians is saying, and what I'm telling you tonight, Acts is saying, is this, is that love isn't a feeling. Love is an action. 
Okay, here's how I know that from Acts. Is Peter and John show up at the temple, right? They're on their way to pray. They're on the way to spend time with God. And Peter does not have gold or silver. He doesn't have anything to give this guy. He asks him, he says, gold, I don't have silver or gold. Okay, so he doesn't have anything. So the loving thing is he could say, hey, let me just pray for you. Um, or, you know, I'm really sorry that you're in poverty. But he's what he does is he says, he, he kind of knows that as a follower of Jesus, there is something he is called to do, right? To love this person means he has to give him what he's got. And he's what he says. He says, what I do have is I have Jesus. And I'm going to give Jesus to you. I'm going to give Jesus to you. Because Jesus to me is not just something that's like an idea or a, or a hope. Like he's a real living person who's raised from the dead. And I want you to know him. And I'm going to help you get to know him. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to ask for him to heal you right now. Okay? So he prays for him and he's healed. Now, we can get really lost in and get confused about, well, does that happen today? Do people get healed today? The short answer is yes, actually. People do get healed today. But... That's kind of missing the bigger point. He's the main point is that Peter knew that to love him, he had to give something that he'd been given away, right? Now, it just so happened in this chapter, he didn't have gold or silver. He didn't say that it would be a bad thing to give gold or silver. He just said he didn't have it, right? So here's what I want you guys to think about. What in your life do you have to give away? First of all, number one, you all have Jesus. You can all share Jesus with someone. You can totally pray for someone and ask God to heal them. Just because you don't see it right then or see a miracle does not mean at all that God hasn't heard your prayer or that someone wasn't incredibly loved by you taking the time to pray for them, right? How much of your days spent praying for other people, right? They were on their way to the temple to pray. Do you guys spend time praying for other people? Do you pray for your mom and your dad? Do you pray for our healthcare workers right now with all they're going through? He's a huge one you can pray for. Pray for your teachers. It's really hard for your teachers right now. They miss you a whole bunch. And the whole way that they do teaching with you has been disrupted. As many as you guys don't like student portals and online learning and all that, your teachers like it less, I promise, right? Maybe there's a couple who are like, oh yeah, I dig this. But for the most part, teachers out there love being with you, right? They love being with their students and spending time with you. And even though you don't think that they do. And so the, one of the best things we can be doing for right now is praying for our teachers, praying that God would be with them. Okay, I'm down to two minutes and I've got two more things to go. So I've got to go real quick, okay, because I don't want to go too much past the eight o'clock. Um, so then we keep going, right? So the heal him, it's amazing. The second thing that Jeff said this morning that I want to bring us back to and that I see in Acts is that it's about more than talking about Jesus, right? Because Jeff said, and this is what got me. It got me as, as kind of another pastor at the church. It got me as like a youth pastor especially. And it got me just as a person. Is he said, speaking about Jesus doesn't mean that you're filled with the love of God, right? Let me explain what that means a little bit. What Jeff's saying is that you can, you can know a whole bunch about the Bible. And you can talk about Jesus a whole bunch. But that's not the same thing as being filled with the love of God. What being filled with the love of God means is that you're going to serve other people. You're loving your neighbor and you're loving God and you're, you're giving up your life for other people, right? You're making space in your life for other people to love them, right? So example, right? I'll give you an example of me because I can be a terrible person. If you ever need an example of a sinner, I'm a good one, okay? This is why I need Jesus so much. Is I talk to you guys an awful lot about Jesus, right? We get on, we do access, we do all the things we do. Uh, and I know a lot about the Bible. I went to university to learn about it. But that, in the eyes of God, that doesn't mean that I have any more love in my heart for him than you do. And in fact, I know a lot of you guys are so full of love. Sometimes I hear stories from you guys. Like Abby, I hear stories about what you're doing. Or the beans, like the story of them praying for people this week that was on Wednesday Night Live. Or the LeBrons and all that they're doing for their neighborhood. And like all you guys. We could just go through a long list of all you guys and the amazing things you're doing. The Gastons and what they, they, they've been doing. They've been writing cards for vulnerable elderly people. Right? I hear about that and I get so convicted and so challenged. And I'm like, man, I want to be like those guys. I, I don't just want to talk to them about Jesus. I want to... 
I want to really be filled with the love of God. I want to be excited about going and saving other people and making time in my life to save other people who need my love and need my encouragement, right? Because it, it can it makes a difference, right? Every single one of us has been created in the image of God to love others well. And you guys, every single one of you have got talents and gifts and abilities to love other people, and I want you to use them, right? I don't want what we do at church to be just all up here in your brain, right? Because there was another group of guys here in the Bible that get a lot of flack, and they had tons of God and Bible in their brain, but they, they didn't have the love of God, right? Because right after this, right, in chapter 3, and once we get to chapter 4, we find out that the religious leaders were really angry with Peter and John because they healed a guy, right? They, they knew more than anyone else, right? And they get super mad with Peter and John for healing this guy because they were talking about Jesus, right? None of them actually open their eyes and take notice of the fact that, oh my gosh, this guy was healed, right? Like, if we go back to the Gospel of John, right, which we've been reading in our Bible app, in chapter 5, Jesus says, you search the scriptures diligently because you think by them you'll know God, but you don't know that the whole Bible was meant to be about me, right? You miss the whole thing. He's the truth, guys, is that just because someone speaks about Jesus, even me, doesn't mean you're filled with the love of God. I need you guys to pray for me, and I pray that the love of God would fill me from top to bottom. And I hope that you guys in our in this group in Axis feel loved and valued and accepted and wanted, right? I hope when you hear me say I miss you, you know I really mean it. Like, I, I, I'm just, I could name all of y'all's names right now, right? LeBron's, Plasinski's, the the Schulenbergs, the Van Rossums, like, we just go on and on, right? I miss you guys really badly. The Kayleys, I miss you guys so much. I, and I want to miss you guys because I want to be filled with the love of God so that I want to be there with y'all, right? So think about all the people you're not getting to be with right now, who you're distant from, and pray for them. Pray for them and think about them because it, what we want to do in this time is not just fill our heads with more Bible and get some kind of theological answers or some Bible answers for why what's happening is happening or how to make it through what's happening. We, let's use this time to love other people, to, to be filled with the love of God. And just like Peter and John, because they were looking for opportunities, like they come past this guy at the gate of the temple and they're like... Boom, this is a chance to love someone. This is a chance to give Jesus to someone. Let's do it. Are you guys chasing opportunities to give Jesus, to share Jesus? Are you praying for people, right? All this stuff, there's really easy things we can do. Okay, I'm already over by three minutes. So I failed the Andrew Griffiths Bible teaching challenge, but I've got one more thing, the most important thing, and this is where we're going to end tonight, is number three, God loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. That's what the whole chapter that Jeff was talking about this morning is really all about. Is about It's describing love, and it's describing the way that God loved us, right? In this story in Acts, Peter and John say, we don't have gold and silver. What we have is Jesus. What we have is Jesus. The one who changed their lives was Jesus. The one who heals the man is Jesus, not them. They pray, but Jesus is the one who heals them by the Holy Spirit, Right? And, the, and then Peter gets into this amazing sermon where he says a couple of different things. And this is what he says in verse 18. In this way, God fulfilled what he had predicted through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out and that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send us Jesus, who has been appointed for you as the Messiah. It's all about Jesus, right? Do you know what this book is about, right? It's not about how you can love other people better. You can pull some of that from this, right? Now you're like, oh my gosh, can you say that? Is that like a real thing as a pastor? Yeah, that you can learn how to love people better from this book. But do you know why? Because this book is filled with the stories of how God loved us, right? That's what Peter is saying. Everything that had been predict predicted through the prophets, that was God planning a way to rescue us, to love us, to wipe away our sins and refresh us and do amazing things in our lives. He's the one that heals us. He's the one that does all this, right? All of it is about Jesus. This whole book is about Jesus, not about us. And when we get that it's about Jesus, we'll actually start loving people better. When you get that the most loving thing that you can do for someone is share Jesus with them and encourage them in Jesus, everything else falls into place, man.
right? But if you think that this book is a list of things that you do so that you can be right with God, you've completely missed the point. I mean, completely. You can't get right with God by doing things yourself. The way you get right with God is that God loves you so much, he sent his son for you. The way you get right with God is God. God has already made a way for you to be right with him. He's already wiped away your sins. So for everyone out there, who, whoop, Gospel of John, pop back up. Um, for everyone out there who's hearing this message tonight and who's like, does God really love someone like me? Let me tell you, there is no bigger sinner on this live stream right now than me. And we maybe we can have a conversation about all the ways I can prove that to you some other day. But I have discovered that in this is love. Not that I have loved God, but that he has loved me. And that he gave his son for me. That's from 1 John 4.10. Guys, uh, you know what I want you to know more than anything else in this youth group? No matter who you are, where you come from, whether you call yourself a Christian, I just I want you to know that that phrase, God loves you, when I say it to you, and when people at this church say it to you, and when your small group leaders say it to you, it is not just because that's what you say if you're a Christian. It really means something. It means that God wants you and values you. You are important to him. He cares about your life and he wants to use your life to impact others where they are. God values you so much. So much that he would give his one and only son. Right? You know that famous verse, John 3.16? Do you know what a better translation of it is? Like a lot of times we, we say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Uh, one, another Bible translation, and I think a better one, is this is the way that God loved us, that he sent his son. In this way, God so loved the world. Because the way that he loves us is that he sends his son. He gives the most precious, most incredible thing in all the world, his son, Jesus, for us. Right. So when, whenever we talk about love, with, there's no understanding love without Jesus. There's just none, right? And so when we say that phrase, God loves you, it is not just something we say to hopefully help you feel better. When I'm saying it, I'm telling you that the creator of the universe, the one who built stars and planets and galaxies, the one who filled the oceans, the one who put every cell of your body together, the one who knows the hairs on your head, even on a bald head like mine, loves you. He values you. He's seeking you. He's chasing you. He's coming after you. All of us are just beggars at the gate. And we're hoping that someone takes notice of it, right? We're hoping we're popular at school. We're hoping that we get the right grades. But then God shows up at the gate. And what I love about this chapter in Acts 3 is this little phrase... Peter, along with John, looked straight at him, so he turned to them. So he's what happened is they were walking in, and he kind of didn't even notice them, and they looked straight at him because they love him, because they know this is an opportunity to share Jesus. That is a picture of what God does for all of us. We're all distracted by so many things. Am I popular? Am I smart? Am I beautiful? Am I, you know, whatever? Am I talented? Um... But God loves us, apart from all those things, and he sees us, and he looks right at us. And he comes into our lives. Okay, and we're going to keep talking about those kinds of ideas for the next few weeks. Love and acts and all that. But I know we're at 8 or 9, 9 minutes over the line. We all knew I was not going to do it in like 10 minutes. That would be crazy. Okay, here's how I'm going to finish with two exciting announcements. Two exciting announcements. Um... And then I'm going to pray. There's a couple of things that I want to do with you guys over the coming weeks. And hopefully uh, I've still got enough of you guys on uh, to hear these. Because these are going to be big and I want them to share you with friends. First of all, we're going to have a Netflix watch party in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to send out an email with all the details. It'll be in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, a Netflix watch party. What you need is Chrome uh, on your computer. You need a Netflix account. And that is it. And we're going to have a Netflix watch party of... Come on. Is it going to be anything else other than a Marvel movie? Of course not. It's going to be Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War, right? And then if that goes well, we can watch uh, Avengers Endgame. But um, we're going to have a Netflix watch party of those movies uh, that I'll send out. To, and you can uh, ask your parents and they'll get you logged on. And we'll do it one night together. We can all watch together. You can invite families. They can come and watch together as well. 
Uh, and then we can also um, do something else I'm really excited about. A few weeks uh, from now as well, we are going to have the first ever Axis talent show. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to tell me what talent or hobby have you taken up during quarantine that you have become really good at. And you're going to create a little video of yourself. And then we're going to put the top videos together. And I'm going to show them at an Access Live in a couple of weeks. So we're going to do an Access talent show. So, yeah, we got two things coming up that's going to be really fun. is a Netflix watch party. Uh, and then we're also going to have um, a talent show. So be thinking about those. Be thinking about what would you put in a talent show. Uh, and then be watching for the details I'll send out on the Netflix watch party. We've still got a couple of weeks, so I'll mention it next week again. Uh, and I'll tell you when it's going to be and at what time and everything like that. Uh, but just get ready to invite people to it. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Okay. I've taken you for way too long tonight. I've loved having you guys with me. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Uh, again, I miss y'all and love y'all. So let me pray for us, uh, and then we'll get out of here, okay? Father God, thank you for tonight. Uh, thank you just for the extra little bit of time, uh, even that it took, uh, just to reflect. And God, I, pr I pray that when we get off this live stream, God, that you would you'd help us just pause for a minute. Just take a minute, not to just switch it off and move on to the next YouTube video or go do something else, but Lord, that we pause and we think about three things. We think about the fact that love is not a feeling, it's an action. That we think about the fact that speaking about Jesus is not the same thing as being filled with the love of God, and we want to be filled with the love of God. And lastly, and most of all, we would really understand what it means to be loved by you. And Lord, I pray that that's what we would sit in the longest. When we get off this little live stream, Lord, that we just sit and say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you for seeing me, taking notice of me and wanting me. It is amazing that you want us, God. And I, I don't know everybody here on this live stream's backgrounds and lives, but I know, Lord, that I am a big sinner. But you are a big savior. And you have loved me. Lord, and you love these students, and you love their families, and you care for them deeply. Lord, we uh, ask you bless them in the name of Jesus, and you bless us all as we go from this place. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you again so much for being here uh, and taking this extra little bit of time. I, I know we went long. <laughs> Let's be honest. It was that Hamilton game that took away too long. But uh, hopefully Internet will be back on my home next week, and we'll play another crazy game. We'll get together and spend some time together. Um, I love y'all, miss y'all. I uh, hope you have a great week. Uh, remember, if you want to join us for the Gospel of John, you can do that tomorrow at 3 p.m. on YouTube on our middle school channel. Uh, uh, on Thursday at 3 p.m. as well on our YouTube channel. Um, spread the word. Let other people know. We'd love to see you all there. Uh, but otherwise, take care, guys. Y'all are the best. Love y'all.